the all-star app the number one app in the business ufc bellator one championship pfl and more get the app right now link in description all right let's uh chad man i, I want to first off talk about uh the new facilities for cmma man Eight thousand square feet that is incredible that's a huge massive place you know i've been seeing the videos online just talk about the transition from the old place to the new one yeah for sure um so we just moved into our our new headquarters eight square feet on paper it seemed like it was going to be a smooth transition um it was everything but that it was a complete nightmare i mean it's it's still we're still trying to figure out how to get everything together and it's you know it's going to be a bit of a process but you know we went from our um our four thousand square foot spot that we've been at for um for eight years uh we opened up in 2014 and now we've just outgrown it now it's uh, it was time for us to really build a full facility for our athletes and our students and now uh we're what three weeks into the new place and just getting settled in and every couple of days we're, we're adding more to it and it's coming uh more together and it's pretty amazing to watch it uh, uh all come together yeah man um what exactly do you have at the facilities you know nowadays you got like gyms that have pretty much everything you know what i mean you got like recovery areas and and you know all that stuff do what is, what does your gym include so the new place that we have, I mean, we're still in, in a building process. So a lot of it is still, you know, it's got some ways to go. But we have we have a full cage now. We've got a strength and conditioning uh, room. We have a sauna. We have um, more like uh, uh, aerodyne equipment. We have a men and women locker room. And the biggest thing that we're putting in is, uh, I, I don't think it's any secret that our gym is very. It's a very competitive gym. You know, we've got a lot of guys that compete. And we are installing a, um, a Street Fighter 2 arcade machine. So, that you know, I don't know any other gym that has it. So, I think our, our level of competition is going to skyrocket. <laughs> That's incredible, man. And once you get one of those, man, you know you're going to have to get another one and another one. People are just going to be fiending for it, basically. I know, I know. And then I'll be, I'll be in a whole different uh, industry. Yeah, you'll be in the arcade industry. You'll be having kids coming by playing video games all day. There you go, right? Not, not bad, man. Talk about the team, man. It's it's grown, you know, over the years. And, and that's why, you know, that's probably part of why you had to go to a bigger facility, a better facility. Um, has it been incredible for you, man, just the journey of just building that team? Yeah, man. Like, you know, for me, I've been a competitor my whole life. And when I stepped down from being an actual hands-on competitor I needed something to fill that void and becoming a coach was that void and when I stopped fighting in 2019 I dedicated my energy to the same thing so it was like I had to go from full-time I'm doing this with with it with a with a goal in mind uh competitor to that transitioning into being a coach now and uh, it's, it's, it's going great. You know, we've got guys in the UFC, we've got guys in Bellator, we've got a ton of up and comers. I've got, uh, amateurs that are, uh, uh, excelling and getting ready to go pro. I've got some that have gone pro and even tomorrow I leave for Las Vegas with a couple of my guys. Uh, we're on the, uh, the USA team. Uh, I'm one of the coaches for the 14 USA and the world Ch amateur world championships that are going to be coming up in, uh, in January. So, you know, we got a lot of amazing things going on and, that was definitely one of the reasons why we had to open a bigger place because, I mean, any given day, we have 25 to 40 uh, competitors on our mats for our team training. And uh, it's, it's as far as I'm aware, you know, we're, we have one of the biggest up and coming programs in the state. And, we, you know, we're right there competitively with some of the biggest schools in the world. How is it balancing the amateurs with the pros, man? I've talked to many coaches and it is a handful just to just to handle the, the different personalities, you know. Yeah, you know it is, but we have we have a very strict um, expectation guideline when when you're in our in our room. If you are on those mats, you are you have the expectations of, of anybody that's in the UFC uh, or 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 myself, and we got guys like Josh Barnett that are there. And you know, if you are not going to give us what we would do ourselves, then it's not the environment for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, some gyms are for some guys, and some aren't. And, you know, we, we have very, very high expectations of everybody that gets on those mats because I want people to succeed um, when they're when they're going into this this very um, unforgiving sport. And with the with the knowledge and experience of the of the coaches that we have, 
you know, we're telling these guys, look, if you're going to bullshit, don't do it here because this is not the place for it. We're not, we're not here to babysit. We want people that are really going to give a hundred percent and try to make something of the sport. Do you feel like since you are a, a former competitor, you know what I mean? A guy that has fought for many years at the highest level that there is a different level of respect that comes with that as a coach? Yeah, I think it does because when I say something, it's coming from experience. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not anybody that can look go to me and be like, "Well, how do you know that?" or "Why should I do that?" And it's simple because I've done, I've done it. You know, I've done things uh, on on the highest level that have been great decisions, and I've done things on the highest level that have been not great decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I've had some success and I've had a lot of failure. And you know, I, my goal is to give these guys a tool so they don't make the same failures as I have, and they can really build their own story. So, you know, yeah, definitely, like, my experience as a competitor is something that I think gives people confidence in what we're doing and what they're doing. Yeah, uh, I've, you know, I've spoken with a few coaches that come from kind of, like, your background, and they do, they have their own gyms now, and they have teams that they're building, and one thing that's common about that is that that catering to people thing. Like, they don't want to do that. They don't want to cater to people, and there's... People that run gyms, I'm not going to say names, but they cater to certain individuals. And, and I think that creates a bad environment. Do you Have you ever seen that at like from afar in gyms? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, many gyms have like click based um, mm-hmm. uh, groups. And that's one of the biggest things that we are, are focused on is that we are a collective. We, we are a team that trains together. Nobody's bigger than the team. Mm-hmm. Understand that because when you need that team for your training, as you start getting into the bigger fights, you need your team to be there for you. You don't want it to be like, oh, fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit because he does his own thing. It's like, no, we all work together. That's also one of the things that we, we talk about. Like, I don't care if a world champion comes into our gym. Mm-hmm. If he's uncoachable and he can't be a team player, I don't want him. It's too much of a headache. There's no amount in the world uh, of money that's going to make me want to coach guys that are going to make – me want to babysit them or hold their hand i'm not into it for this that's not how i was brought up you know like when i was starting out it was literally like we're in the gym three four times a day there was no money in it you didn't have to beg me to get into the gym it was because i you know we 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 love this you know we were trying to pursue something that was all about passion and i have zero desire to have to beg somebody to be in the gym i can't do it i won't do it yeah, yeah, and you know, it's and it's better to I think to create your own champion, right? From the from the ground up. You know, if 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 you're if you're fortunate enough to, absolutely, yeah. you know. But you know that they're going to go on their path and they're going to go on their journeys throughout this whole all time and um, you know, as long as you can keep a culture around those athletes. Mm-hmm. That cuz that's what it's about. It's about teaching culture. And and once they understand the culture, that's how you build people up and they have a culture around being a, a, an actual athlete as a fighter. Too many of these guys, they want the clout or whatever that means to go on social media and talk about you're a professional fighter. But none of them actually live the life. They don't have the culture of it. There's a yeah. lifestyle. And that's the biggest thing that I think if you take away from building a guy from the ground up is that you teach them the lifestyle of it. And that's something that regardless of accolades later on, that's something that they could take away for the rest of their life and be like, I did that. The big topic in, in MMA right now, and you've probably seen it and, and been a a victim of it is is the judging right the the past couple of weeks have there's been some some controversial decisions now what are your overall thoughts on like how they judge fights do you feel like every judge is from they're they're like looking at the same criteria nah, the, every state is different every show is different you know and it's unfortunate because a lot of guys careers are tainted because of decisions you know mm-hmm. like one one wrong call you know, really, really does change your life. You know, if you had a chance of becoming world champion, that's life changing, you know, and um, it's, it's really unfortunate. You know, these judges don't go to recertification training. They don't do these things. Half of them don't train, you know, and it's, and it's, it really sucks. And then people say, well, then, you know, don't leave it to a judges. And I understand that statement, but the, but the thing is like, so you're telling me that I can't give it to a guy that that's their job, their job. That'd be like telling the fighter, well, don't, don't leave it to them to fight. Well, that's what we're here for. The judges are supposed to be there and do their job, but they're so inconsistent. It's ruining guys in careers. So it's, it's really unfortunate the way it is. And uh, of course, you know, when you're fighting against the best guys in the world, you're trying to finish them. Sometimes you can't, the guy's really good. You're really good. And the judges should be able to like do the right things and have a, a set standard of, of what's going on, but they don't. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand that at the highest level, it's extremely, extremely hard to finish another guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm surprised that there are so many finishes in, in, in Bellator, in the UFC, right? Because there's so many guys that are so good and so skilled in everything. They're so well-rounded, right? Um, right. What, what about um, open scoring? Do you feel like that would help? In, in any way? I, I, look, I, I think it will to a degree. You know, at least you know if you're losing or not. You know, you don't know where it's going to go. I think it gives you an opportunity for it. Um, I also think that there needs to be replays. Mm-hmm. We need to have some kind of back. Every other sport in the world has it. Why do only certain states have it? It's, it's stupid. You know, like uh, open scoring could help. Replays can help. But also just constant education for these referees and judges and having a criteria what allows you to be a judge, you know, like in a ref. Just because you've been doing it for 20 years doesn't mean you know what's going on. It doesn't mean you know, you know, um, anything about jiu-jitsu. You've been a boxing ref. Great. Cool. How do I know? Like, you don't know what's going on on the floor. That, that's not fair to the ground guys. Like, we actually lost a fight recently where the referee told me, well, they couldn't see because the, uh, the takedown happened on the other side of the cage. And they couldn't see if there was any damage being inflicted. Um, but on the feet, they, they could hear the leg kicks. So they ended up going the other direction in that round. I'm like, how does that make sense? The leg kick did not change anything in the fight, but my guy that took him down was going for submissions the whole time, you know, but they don't, they don't see it. Yeah. It's a, it's a never ending journey with that, man. I I feel like commissions and and promotions doesn't, they don't seem like they want to do anything about it. Have you talked to any of the commission people about that? I, I talk to them all the time, and the, the unfortunate part about it, it's not even the the refs. A lot of the refs are open to it. Mm-hmm. It's the higher ups. Yeah. You know, because the higher ups aren't actually involved in it. They're the ones that are just, you know, they're the clerical people, and they're like, nope, it's the way it is. And a lot of them are the guys that have been in the um, uh, uh, what you might call it, in the uh, the judging system for for years. You know, that'd be like trying to remove all the boxing coaches, uh, the boxing referees, and being mm-hmm. like, you guys are out. No, it's just we just got to get them trained if they're going to do it. Yeah, that's. I think yeah, the education, like you said, is is probably going to be the the best uh, solution to this. Um, Chad, appreciate the time, man. Everybody, go download the All Star app in the descriptions. Always good catching up, man. I'll hit you up and uh, have a good rest of the day with the fam, man. Sounds good. Appreciate it, brother.